Yeah, Sean Weathers, I mean, he's a dope, he's a dope cat, man. When I was listening to his music, I kind of felt like I got like a good mixture of like a little bit of like the old school with a little bit of the new school, you know what I'm saying? Um, it was definitely a dope experience just listening to his music and then I could, then able to come up with some questions of my own to ask him, you know, for, for the show and um, it came out dope. It was definitely, it was dope because it, it was resonating, you know, I feel like I was in the same place uh, like mentally and spiritually for a while, you know what I mean? So hearing somebody else kind of dropping the same seeds on you was like, all right, that's kind of confirmation in a way. So between that and then the real like reminiscent uh, beats and stuff, like it was dope. What's up everybody, it's your man Ren the Man. It's definitelyamazed.com and we're here with Lyricist Chronicles, but it's an all new Lyricist Chronicles. This is Lyricist Chronicles, the Artist to Artist series. Now, I said to myself a while ago, I want to create something new, something innovative, something that's never been done before. And I decided the best way to do that is to get two artists in the same room and have them interview each other. But everybody's like, yo, man, how you gonna do that? Perfect. All you gotta do is find two phenomenal artists who you respect and you like both their music. It's easy, <laughs> it's easy. Once you find that, it's easy. So, here's what we gonna do everybody. If you like this episode, you know what to do. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and leave a comment. And if you wanna hear any of these guys' music, their stuff is gonna be spreading across the screen as we speak. Mm -hmm. But let me introduce you to these guys. You've already seen their intros in the beginning of this show. To my right or maybe left, depending on how this thing pans out, <laughs> is the man known as Amari Mar on Lyricist Chronicles before, but he's also been featured on Saturday Morning Cartoons and Series. But right. guess what? You got something in common with this guy. <laughs> the man over here is Sean Weathers. He's also been featured on Lyricist Chronicles and featured That's on fact. last season of Saturday Morning Cartoons and Serial. So you guys got that in common. But that's mm -hmm. not all. The other thing you guys got in common is you put out projects this year. Mm -hmm. So I said the best way for you guys to let everybody know about those projects is to talk about them here. This is Lyricist Chronicles. How we gonna do this is, I'm gonna ask questions to both of you guys. I also have solo questions for you guys. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna chime in with your questions. So I know you got three questions for him. Mm -hmm. You got three questions for him. Mm -hmm. You've listened to each other's music for the last three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, first question I gotta get out the ball is, how, you know, how was it with this experience of listening to an artist's music, not your own, for the purpose of this show? How was that experience? I mean, it was a dope experience as far as just being able to, you know, get another um, perspective, you know, from another artist, you know, hearing the music, knowing what they're about. And um, yeah, it was just, it was pretty dope, man. Get to know more about the artist based on the thing they talk, what he's talking about his music, you know? Dope, yeah. dope, dope. Sean, how about you? I would say some of the same. Um, you know, usually when I'm listening to music, it's like, I'm trying to pick it apart and like, you know, figure out what's making what work here and there. And this one was more, I just listened, was, was listening for the enjoyment. You know what I'm saying? Right. Just listening, trying to take it all in and just understand his vision. You know what I'm saying? And not what I'm looking for, you feel me? Right, right, mm -hmm. right, right, right. And I think the thing that I really wanted to do with this is get two artists who have similarities, but who are vastly different in their approach. Mm -hmm. And I thought you guys fit that mold <coughs> perfectly. Um, I think as two artists that I've listened to for a very long time, I think you've each have grown tremendously through your musical uh, career. Which brings me to my first solo question for Mr. Amari Mar. So, mm -hmm. how have you grown as an artist and as a lyricist from Too Many, Crook, too Many Cooks mm -hmm. to Grand Rising? Too many cooks. 
if I may say, that was a pretty big way to open up. Mm -hmm. Coogee Rap, mm -hmm. to open up yeah. your album? That's like, yo, <laughs> That's like going to start your first game of football and Barry Sanders introduces you <laughs> onto the field like and you're a running back. Like if you trip, everybody's gonna be talking about that. So how how was it growing from too many cooks to grand rising? I just felt like from too many cooks to grand rising, I felt like I've grown a lot. I've grown a lot spiritually, I've grown a lot as far as um just as far as the music is concerned, you know what I mean? Um, with Too Many Cooks, it just felt like it was more experimental. I felt like, you know, it was just really like just coming in out the gates, just swinging, you know what I'm saying? Letting people right. know like, yo, this is me right here. Right. Too Many Cooks. Right. Then to now to Grand Rising, it just felt like I had to take life more in perspective, you know what I mean? And just coming into my own and, you know, I'm older now, more wiser. So I had to come in with something with more subs. Grand Rising, I just felt like, um, I was able to really bring my experience, bring my spirituality more into place with this, with that album. Don't Whereas Too Many Cooks, it was more like, you know, just more straight, just raw hip hop. And I'm still dropping jewels, still giving, you know, the audience, the listener, you know, just um, something worth, to, you know, to, um, to hear what I'm talking about. But Grand Rising is just giving you like everything. Dope, you know what I'm saying? Dope, dope, dope. Or, Speaking of fantastic, Lyrics, you're wearing the Lyrics Still Matter t-shirt. There you go. You, cop. you know <laughs> where the cop it goes, definitely amazes IG page. The link is in the bio. Lyrics Still um, Matter, people. Now, <laughs> you, Jean, also have had a tremendous amount of music. But one of your projects that I was a big fan of <clears throat> was The Process. Mm -hmm. But we're coming up to Mercury. What aided your lyrical evolution from the process to Mercury? I would say with the process, it was almost like a reintroduction to myself because I had put out like the mixtapes before through college. Right. But like this was like the first project I put out outside of school. You know, I kind of touched real life a little bit. So the process was a hassle to get done. Hence the name, the process. Right, right. It was just like, look, if you're gonna do this, these are some of the bumps that's gonna come with it. So either you're gonna stop now or you're gonna get through it. You know what facts, I'm saying? Facts. Mm -hmm. So that's what the process was. And then kind of going from that to Mercury, obviously we went into lockdown. You know, I had like one or two songs written before before that, but lockdown really kind of made you sit with yourself for a while. You know, I'm sure a lot of people at home had to go through the same thing. Everybody's quarantined. Facts, so facts. Mm -hmm. you're all sitting right, with right. yourself, you're sitting with your thoughts. You got to find a way to cope. You feel me? Because you're stuck in the house all this time. And it's just, uh, it was a lot of coming to terms with um, just baggage that I had to let go of maybe, or noticing certain things about life and kind of the same thing as far as growing spiritually and shit like that. So mm -hmm. that's definitely like the main thing behind Mercury right there. I, I, I could dig that, I could dig that. Now, fellas, I know you got some questions for each other, so uh, mm -hmm. by all means, let's go with your first question for Sean, and then we will go Sean tomorrow. Right. So, Sean, I was um, I want to know. So, who was like your music, you know, musical inspiration or artist that you know you, that, that inspired you to do what you do? Uh, if you want to go way back, like all the way back to the beginning, probably Bow Wow. Bow Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My okay. first album was Beware of Dog. Okay. okay. And then, right. yeah, that was the that was the very first CD mm -hmm. I had. It's the Shad Moss. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then from there it was just uh, you know, my pops was heavy into hip hop. So okay. my mom too. So like Nas, Tribe, uh, Mob Deep, you know, nice. a lot of storytellers and Jay Z's and Double Entendre people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, just I got real, you. Word, word. Most Def. That's one Can't of my favorites. That. Yeah, Most, most Def one of my favorite yeah. artists. You kind of touched on it a little bit with the first question you asked, was just where you were personally when making this project because it's very um, like pro black, love yourself, you know what I'm saying? Spiritual, you feel me? Like it was very like in that in that category right there, and I I rock with that. But I wanted to know Appreciate what it. was the catalyst behind wanting to spread that particular message. 
Yeah. Um, I was just at a point where I, had, I was making a lot of changes, personal changes within myself from changing the way I eat, changing the way I think, and just going on this journey as far as finding myself spiritually. So once I started changing the way I eat, and it just reflected in the music, because once I started writing, these are the things I wanted to talk about to bring people into my world. Yeah. We found that you guys, uh, we found that you guys are good at this interview. <laughs> I might have some people coming up on the mic. I think you might have to get off this one. Shoot, right I might, here, yeah, you might have to switch seats in a second. Let's forget I'm here. Let's forget I'm here. Um, you know what? I'm the type of person that I feel like mm. at every point in your life, you have to have the op you have to give yourself the opportunity to shout out somebody else. Because mm -hmm. it can't always be about you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, right. And I feel like in the independent artist game, we do a lot of, yeah, yeah, so some of my favorite artists is people who I am and never even heard my music before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's so many dope artists that you guys know or have listened to that probably listen to your music. So I gotta ask you this quick question. Um, for each of you, name four independent artists whose lyrics make you say, yo, that's dope. Uh, mm. I'll start with you. Four independent artists that make you say, yo. Off top, I'm going to say Kyrie. He's a, a Cincinnati artist, an artist from Cincinnati, however you want to put it. But um, I've been listening to him since 2016, 2017. Dope. No. He just put out a couple projects over the last two years, so he's been moving nice. Uh, My Name Dwayne is another another dope artist. He's from Baton Rouge, uh, Louisiana. That's okay. Louisiana. He's from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, we actually collabed on a track at one point, too. Mm, uh, that was a song called The Pretty Brown Flower. That was the first time I met him. Um, he came out here to do that video, but his his project just came out last year, too, and that was Dope as hell all the way through. It's definitely a vibe. Um, third, I'm gonna say AJ Radico. AJ Radico, uh, he's a he's from Queens, I believe. I had met him a couple years back because my homie had worked at uh, Sam Ash, okay. so I met him through my homie, and you know we kind of just hung out for the night. Cool dude, dope as hell. But back then he was playing like beats he did, and I'm like, bro, this is. Like, this is some right, fire right, right here. Right, like, right. And then he dropped a couple singles, and I'm like, nah, this man is really fire right here. And he just put out a project called Transit that came out like a month or two ago, but eight tracks, all fire. I still bumped that like it came out yesterday. And then last person I'm going to say, my boy J Mac, uh, Jeff McDonald. He's, his at is Guard Up. But um, I met him while I was in Ohio, too, another mm. New York artist. But he's definitely, he's, he's New York. Like, he's all the way New York. You hear it in the sound from the jump. I mean, it's something I love about him. Go, go, like, he's go. not, he ain't, he ain't afraid to say what he want to say. You feel me? So, those would be my four off top. I like right that. There. I like that. I like that. What about you, Mark? I have to give props to my boy, um, JS. JS? Jaden Shropside, one of my people that, you know, we went to school, high school together. We made music together. And just to see him, you know, from that time to now, putting out albums and plus, you know, on working on beats, like, I gotta give it up to him, man. Like, dude is nice. I've always told him, like, yo, man, you got it. And my personal favorite um, album that he put out is um, The Yearning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But of course, oh yeah, The Renegades, of course. The Renegades, Facts, of course. your features was fire. Like, every feature was no, on not, it, Good looks, know? man, good looks. <laughs> Ted Bundy, The God, um, Mega X, those are my, that's, that's blood right there. Yeah, it's all you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Renegades, of course, The Renegades. I'm always give you yeah, props yeah. to your people. That's so the other one I had, um, the overall sound of the project is real like 90s reminiscent. You feel me? Like the the I'd agree. Like the quote unquote the lunch table beats. You never go wrong with them. You feel me? Mm -hmm. What made you decide that was the sounds you wanted for the project? I mean, I just I just I just dig the beats, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Those are my kind of kind of beats I like rocking to. And it just so happened that each beat on the album is just they all kind of sound similar but different. So mm -hmm. it all kind of, and the way I sequence the album, it just flows like if it it's just like one long, I don't know, like, like listening to like a journal or something, mm -hmm. you know, it's all in sequence, you know what I mean? 
But I just love rocking to those type of sound, you know, sounding beats. What's the gift? The gift. The okay. gift. Like I'm not gonna hold you when I first heard it. Like immediately, I was. It, it gave me like an Illmatic vibe. Like as far as the the, the beat <laughs> yeah. itself. The and is it was just. I was like, yo, right. like there's no way. Favorite. I was about to say there's no way Nas is not some type of like. Who is your favorite artist? Because you already asked me. Who is your favorite? Yeah, like Dude, I could sit here all day and tell you. <laughs> but Nas is one of them though. Mm -hmm. Nas is one of my favorite artists. I rock him. Yeah, big, man, big daddy, about big daddy, time. shit, it's right there you go. Eric B and Rock came, I don't know if they can see that right there. That's the guard right there, um, Big Daddy Kane, Coogee Rap, obviously, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I got like, so many of them out there, man. Okay, one of the songs I checked out on SoundCloud, it was, um, you have a song, a record called um, The Ten Black Commandments. Right. You know what I mean? Um, and watch them call it. Um, you said a line on there that says, you said, um, black don't crack. You could be 20 for 30 years. Morgan Freeman looked the same since he started his, his career. career. <laughs> so I wanted to know what was going on in your mind when you said that line. Like, what was transpiring when you said that shit? I mean, exactly what was said. It was just yeah. like, because it was one of those 10 Black Commandments. Obviously, for those who don't know, 10 Black Commandments is me listing out the 10 commandments if you black. It's like, you know, don't touch your drink till you finish your food. You know what I'm saying? Or fix your face before you go in this in this party, even though mom just popped you upside the head. You know what I'm saying? So uh, with that line, it was just like the way I finished it was like, be proud of of, you know, who you are. You know, be proud to be black. There's nothing wrong with it. And in that pride, know that Black don't crack. Look at Angela Bassett. Look at Morgan Freeman. Like, yeah, when is the last time you've seen a young Morgan Freeman? Like, for <laughs> real. <laughs> when have you ever oh, seen man. a young Morgan too, Freeman? You said that line, too. I was thinking, I'm like, yo, Morgan Freeman, he do look the same thing like when I seen the movie with Lean On Me. He looked the same yeah, thing Yeah, exactly. Time. It's funny yeah. that y'all asked, uh, asked each other questions about your music. Not funny, because this was the purpose of it. But, the, but what was crazy is that you asked the lyric question because I got a lyric question for you. Okay. So. Alright, hit me with it. One of my favorite bars from King Shit. Mm -hmm. King uh -huh. Shit is a line that says, when I stretch my shoulder blades and breathe out spit yoga flames. Mm -hmm. Now, lyricists are a lot like Street Fighter characters. I would say lyricists have to compete against other lyricists mm -hmm. bar for bar, punch for punch. Mm -hmm. But each of those lyricists and each of those Street Fighter characters have a special technique. What is your special oh. hip hop technique oh. that you use? Oh. You and that's a good one. That's a good one. Flexing my muscle and flexing those balls. Yeah. What's your What's your special technique? Hard <laughs> rule. <laughs> Damn, I'm have to go with the hurricane kick. You know, but it's just. Just trying to be like clever, witty, smart, you know what I'm saying? Just try to say something, at least no other artist or lyricist said, you know what I mean? I mean, so you, so you try, to, try to use your, your wits in a battle, okay, okay. There you go, like that. try to like, be clever. <laughs> like that, so you're going like, swift, like say, some, some side power. So <laughs> Sean, what's your special technique? Mm. Special technique. Special technique, I'm gonna say, uh, flow play. Flow and wordplay. Oh, he's flow and wordplay. Mm. So he's doing like a. Well, <laughs> yeah. He's doing a little yippity. Okay, I like that. I like that. Do you think that the era of the superstar producer and the importance on dope beats has taken away from the impressions of lyrics in business? Cause now it's all about making sure you got a really fly beat, making sure the beat knock, and if your beat don't knock, people don't listen to your lyrics anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's mainstream. But but what do you guys do? You guys think what's the what's the reason behind it? Do you guys think that that's true? Do you guys not agree with that? Cause that's the whole purpose of the lyrics, no matter uh, brand of mine. It's, it's, a, it's true, mm -hmm. but it's not true. Cause you have like you said the mainstream certain artists are only going to go super mainstream if your beat is knocking you know what i'm right. saying there's certain like there's li there's literally a science to it right you know what i'm right. saying um but then you do have a lot of people and that's where your audience comes into play who are you targeting you got a lot of people that still appreciate lyricism you got 
Mick Jenkins fans, you got J. Cole fans, you got Kendrick fans, you know what I'm saying? Like you have a lot of artists mm-hmm. that have not just the lyrics, but the beats too, ultimately, right. you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people I think have that uh, dope fusion with a good balance of both. Right. You know what I mean? And they may not get as much uh, recognition maybe by the mainstream, but they're doing just as well, if not better than a lot of people that's on the mainstream. I, I think that um, as far as the beast go, I mean, I think the beast is just a good way to draw the listener in. But once, especially for a person that's more into like lyrics, once they catch on to the lyrics, then it's like, okay, now you got me all the way, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But I, th- I think personally, like he said, man, it's all about, you know, who you're trying to um, go for, who's the talk- main, you know, right. audience you're trying to go for. I think, I think, um, I think you know, what, what, I've, what I've learned over the years of, of being a journalist in this hip hop game is that in the independent world, lyrics are greatly, vastly appreciated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, if you do not have lyrical bars, it is very hard for you to uh, for you to make moves in the independent world. Right? That's really what it is. But you guys have not been uh, 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 lacking that in that area at all. I think beat wise, the two of you both picked some great producers, um, and I've been and I think you guys lyrically have always been the stars on your songs. Like the beats are. Your your Robins and you your lyrics mm. are your Batman. I okay. appreciate so that. I've always Look. appreciate that about you guys. <laughs> All right. So you got seventeen songs. Runtime is less than an hour, which is a pretty good balance. What made you decide on seventeen tracks? Cause like personally, like personally, it's hard for me to listen to anybody's album past like twelve. You know, <laughs> so I just want to know what was the decision behind that? Like, it's funny because originally I was going to actually have like about maybe 18 or 19 songs in the album, but <coughs> cut out a couple tracks or whatnot. And I didn't really like set out to say, okay, you know what, let me make it 17 songs. It just so happened that the songs they just fit and it was just perfect. And then when I look back and I said, okay, I got 17 tracks. And then I was kind of looking at it from a um, 5%, you know, thinking. Knowledge okay. itself, as okay. far as with one seventeen, you know what I'm saying. Knowledge God, you know what I'm saying. So mm. I was kind of like, okay, that's mm. perfect. You know what I mean. So, like, <laughs> so how many how many tracks did you make for that? Well, it was gonna be either eighteen or nineteen. You know what I'm saying. But so I just took out two tracks. Okay. And just the tracks that's on the album now, basically the album that fit that you know that fit the album. Yeah. So, I like that. I like yeah. that. I like that. So, what makes you different compared to every other artist that's out in the game? Mm. I'm me. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no, there's no, there's no bigger difference than that right there. Like, whatever their perspective is on whatever situation is not gonna be the same one that I have. So, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna say my piece. I don't care if he made a song about it. I'm gonna say my piece. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And get my point across. Right. And I bet you it won't sound like that, regardless right. of who it is. You just being authentically you. Exactly. Yeah. So, 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 two artists can walk into a room and make a track about Pokemon. Your track is exactly. be different than exactly. your track. Exactly. Okay. We could both be talking about Pikachu. I like, like it. it. <laughs> I, like it. Like. I like it. I like it. <laughs> we all know there are different eras of hip hop. Mm-hmm. But what era of hip hop do you think you would have thrived in? Ooh, that's a very, <laughs> that is a very what good era of hip hop. Good question. Good question. Good question. Very, very good. You want I go first. Um, I'm gonna go first. I think for me, it's either a cross between the golden era, or maybe like somewhere like in the early '90s. But I, I want to say more towards the golden era. <coughs> more towards the, yeah, the, 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 feel, the '80s. Yeah, like the late '80s. Yeah. I, I feel. Yeah. Who you who you would have tried to collab with back then? Um. Just say what's in your mind. Like, I know you would have clapped on like rock, rock, rock yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, the greats. <laughs> he, he, like, he didn't, he didn't you know want it to be the first person he said. MC Light. MC Light. Oh, you wouldn't like what to put, you wouldn't like put a, great, a great track together. Whatever <laughs> you think you would have rocked it. Honestly, this era. 
So you think you just you, you good I for think this? I'm good for this era. Like the nineties like and don't get me wrong, I fuck with the nineties heavy. Like that's to me that's the golden era of, of hip hop for real, for real. But I also know I'm not I wasn't like on no I am not on no hard shit for real for real. You know what I'm saying? Right. That was the that was the universal sound almost when it came to nineties hip hop. So that boom bap. Yeah, the sound, boom bap yeah. kind of sound. And I could do it, you know what I'm saying? But right. it's not like my that's not my specialty, you feel me? I feel like the sound we're going with uh this upcoming project, Mercury, like where this pocket I found is is like perfect for this generation, uh, I mean that not only sound wise but lyrically too, because you know I was talking about the fusion. Like I feel like it's a good balance, and it's modern, but it still has those aspects of like '90s boom bap. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because I'm from New York, so that's gonna be in there. But I think this this era of hip hop is my era of hip hop for real, for real. All right. yep. Tell everybody where they can get the project and all that good stuff, and how they can follow you and all that good stuff. Yo, right now, listen, y'all could just get the album on iTunes or Apple, <coughs> all the digital streaming platforms. You can get it on my Bandcamp page, amarimar.bandcamp.com. You can find me on Twitter, twitter.com slash amarimar. You can find me on Instagram.com, amari underscore marvelous. And yeah, there you yeah. go. Tell everybody what they can expect from Mercury and where they can find it and where they can find you. So with Mercury, you can expect a chill vibe. You can expect a lit vibe. You can expect introspective vibe. Like there's something for everybody. Uh, it's definitely just a vibe overall. And that's coming in June. So look out for that. In the meantime, I have an EP already, you know, streaming. It's called The Process. That's on Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, whatever you stream on. You can find me at Sean Weathers. That's S-H-O-N Weathers. Weather outside with an S. <laughs> Sean Weathers on Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok, uh, anything for real. It's all my name. So. Yeah, you actually just have all those. Yeah, yeah so the tick at the top. YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube and just, you know, stay up to date with us. We got a lot more coming. Well, yeah. brothers, uh, how was this experience for you guys? Was it, how was this experience uh, listening to each other's music for the time that you had listened to each other's music, coming up with these questions, all of that good stuff? It was dope. It was unique. How about you? Unique concept. Uh, same, same thing. That was different. Yeah. yeah. It's not something. It's not something that you know you would really think to do outside of this, and you came up with that. So, yeah. kudos to you, my brother. I appreciate that. Props, I appreciate man. that. So, Listen, brothers. To do the inaugural episode of anything, it is always important, guys. You are the inaugural episode of the Lyricist Chronicles Artist to Artist series, so thank you from the bottom of my heart for doing that, but I want all the people to know that if the lyrics ain't right, the song probably ain't right either. But all you people that think that the lyrics don't matter, unfortunately, I gotta tell you, lyrics still matter. It's your man, Random Man. It's definitely amazing. Dot com. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything coming from Random Man. Facts, B. I'm out. Peace. Peace. I like that. I like